going on, everybody? It is March 24th, Saturday slate. Not the best. Uh, we got five games. Uh, there's a six o'clock start game that I won't be looking at. Not a part of the main uh, part of the main slate. So we've got five to look at. Last night went well. I, I can't complain. Um, I guess today will be the first day of uh, me playing DFS while it's also sort of my job. Pretty exciting. Uh, you'll note up top, um, my projections will still be at joshengelman.com, but the place you want to be moving forward, awesomeo.com. Let's just dive in here. Uh, first game up, Pistons and Bulls. And actually, did I add that line? Sun's Magic. Did I just make that up? That line wasn't there. I'm um, just catching myself realizing that I did something that I shouldn't have done. No, it's just there now. 6 and 218. Cool. Never mind. Ignore me. Um, Pistons and Bulls. Pistons are 12 and a half point favorites at home against the Bulls. Uh, exceptional matchup across the board for the Pistons. Uh, only one that would be a little wary would be um, point guard. But at the same time, you know, the Bulls suck. This is a schedule alert game uh, for the Bulls, but I don't know how applicable that's going to be um, today, you know, just because of, like, they're already bad. How much worse can it be? I don't know. So first up is Drummond, 10-2 uh, on FanDuel, 9,300 on DK. Uh I I love him here. Uh, if he gets the minutes, he should absolutely dominate the Bulls. Um, second best matchup for centers. Where is it? There we go. You know, five big games, three monster games against the Bulls. Uh, makes me really, really interested in Drummond, especially on this five-game slate. He looks exceptional. Um, I fully expect him to pop up a lot in my optimizer. Blake is 9,400 on FanDuel, 9,500 on DK. Uh, that is a large price tag, but he's gone for 50 in his last three. I don't see a ton of value in Blake in GPPs, but he should be a relatively safe cash play. Uh, after that, you know, not a ton to like. Uh, I think Reggie Bullock and Ish Smith would be fine in um on DraftKings particularly ish although you know who knows there but three straight games in the 30s for ish uh 4900 on DK I'd be willing to take that flyer at 5600 there's not as much value there uh, my main guy coming out of this would be Drummond and then um uh, I don't love the rest of the guys for GPPs on FanDuel, I think their prices are just a bit too high. Uh, I think that focusing on Detroit on DraftKings for GPPs might be a little bit more palatable, uh, except for Blake, who is way overpriced on DraftKings. Uh, for the Bulls, because of course it hasn't been refreshed, um, 99.5 implied total, which is 10th. Uh, not expecting to see Markin in here on the back-to-back. -back. Uh, still no Levine or Chris Dunn. Blake and E. Dunn for the year. Uh, Paul Zipser should be back, but, you know, we shall see. Interesting uh, for the Bulls. It's, it's hard to like them because they're playing really balanced and they're also atrocious. Um, they do have a, a solid matchup at center. It's a shame that they don't actually have centers. I really wish that the Bulls' pricing wasn't set up the way it is, but unfortunately it's bringing some of these guys into play. Uh, Denzel Valentine at 5,600 on FanDuel is, is a pretty good spot. Um, lots of upside in that number. You know, you're looking for 28. Uh, he's been over that in the last two, went for 50 recently. Um, I'd have no problem having a bunch of Denzel Valentine. Campaign is probably a little too high. I'd like to nerf him a bit. Um, maybe a little bit more. 
But either way, uh, certainly still in play. 5,200 on FanDuel, 5,500 on DK. I went for 32 last night. Uh, he's going to get the minutes, so no problems having him here. But really, there's no one to be like overly excited about. These are all just like value plays that you jam in. Uh, so Valentine's fine. Campaign is fine. Felicio at 4,000 is absolutely fine. Uh, four straight games, I believe, at 25 or higher, which not bad at all on FanDuel when you're priced at 4,000. So I'm fine there. Uh, Nawaba, I don't have a ton of interest in. Um, but Portis is probably okay. 6,800 is, is pretty healthy for him. Um, and probably a little too high. But he should be able to at least get some work in. Uh, I'm not overly excited about him, but I wouldn't have a problem with it. Uh, if Markinen is out, you know, Noah Vonley at 4,200 is definitely someone to look at. Uh, you know, these are all mostly GPP guys, but I'm cool with having a bunch of them. I think that you'll see relatively similar ownership across the board when we throw them in the op optimizer, but they'll all be kind of high. I don't generally like taking, you know, the worst implied total, so I am going to try to be a little bit muted on it, but unfortunately sometimes these things cross paths and they've got some good prices, mostly because they're bad. Uh, the Magic hosting the Phoenix Suns. I have to have that in there wrong. There's no way the Magic are six-point underdogs at home. Yeah, that should be a positive number. <laughs> Much better. Let's try this now. So Magic, 112 implied total. Uh, tied for second. They are six-point favorites at home against the Suns. Lots to like here. Um so Aaron Gordon, 7,800 on FanDuel, 7,500 on DK. Uh, I think that he is in an incredible spot. He should uh, be a great play tonight. I love him. I want to have a bunch of him. And I rarely say that about Aaron Gordon. So you know I mean business there. Uh, DJ Augustin, 5,300 on both sites. Um, you know, the Suns are bad, really bad against point guards. Uh, I think that there's some upside in his number. Um, Vooch at 8,100 looks really good, so long as he gets somewhere in the 30 minutes range. The only thing that concerns me in this entire game is do either of those these teams actually want to win? Um, and that's, that's my only hesitation. I like a lot of these Magic guys, particularly Gordon and Vooch. But there's a really realistic scenario where they don't play the fourth quarter because they're trying to lose this game. So I don't think that anybody is particularly safe in a cash game scenario because there's so much variability in sort of the way that the teams want the outcome here. Both of these teams are deep in the tank race. Uh, Phoenix is currently last uh, by a half game. Orlando sitting in fourth two and a half games back of Phoenix. So both of these teams want this loss badly. The difference between a top three, the odds of a top three pick from Phoenix and Orlando right now, 64% likely for Phoenix, 37%, well, 38% for Orlando. That's a chasm. And uh, Orlando wants every little bit of being at the top of that lottery. So when push comes to shove, this game could get really ugly in the fourth quarter. So be prepared to, you know, maybe have a good game from Aaron Gordon for three quarters and then see him get iced. Uh, to Phoenix, I'm expecting uh, Devin Booker to play here. Um, it seemed like he was close yesterday, and uh, we might be a little bit more likely to see it today. No TJ Warren, though. If Booker does play, much like Gordon, I think he's in an, an incredible spot. Um you know, Orlando not exactly amazing on D. Uh, and Booker has been handling the ball a little a little bit more, so I kind of see him as like a half-point guard, half-shooting guard, which is a decent matchup. So if Booker plays, um, I'm going to have a decent amount of him. You just got to keep an eye on the news 
with this being a 7 o'clock game, we'll have it before lock, or at least we should. So no issues there. Um, I think Josh Jackson looks fine. Uh, the guy that I would want to take a look at would be Marquise Chris, 3,800 on FanDuel, 3,600 on DK. Got the start last night, um, put up 43.5 fantasy points in 35 minutes. If they're going to give him that sort of run um, anywhere north, I've got him at 26 minutes tonight, but anything there or north of it um, turns Marquise Chris into a guy that you really want to have a lot of just because of the minutes in that price. Um, so keep an eye on that starting lineup news. If you see that Chris is playing, you you want to have him in an overwhelming amount of lineups, particularly on a five-game slate. And then Alex Len, 4,500 on both sites. Uh, he's just sort of the only option at center for them. Um, no problems. Having him should be relatively safe. I know Orlando is decent against centers and has been recently, but... Um, you know, at 4,500, you're not, uh, it's not as if you're committing yourself. Um, he can, he can not play well and it won't necessarily murder your lineup. And then I think it's time to finally get off the Alfred Payton bandwagon. Uh, he's just not playing enough. 22 minutes last night, 6.4 fantasy points. Who knows if Booker plays, maybe this will turn into the game where Payton blows up, but I'm a little nervous to see it. Rockets hosting the Pelicans. Uh, no Chris Paul tonight. No uh, Luke Richard and Bahamute. So lots of extra minutes going to a couple of these guys, which opens up some really good value, uh, particularly in Aaron Gordon. Aaron Gordon. Eric Gordon. Fucking Orlando. Uh, 5,200 on FanDuel is ridiculous for what he's going to be doing with Paul out. Um, you can see in the last game, uh, Gordon went for 35 in 42 minutes. Um, should get all the minutes that he can handle tonight. Great matchup. You know, Pelicans haven't been anything special on defense. So uh, Gordon is going to be very highly owned on FanDuel at that price, and with good reason. Uh, DK, I would uh, treat him much different. $1,600 more expensive. James Harden. Uh, Exceptional play tonight, in my opinion. 11-8 on FanDuel, 11-7 on DK. Uh, I, I just like him, um, plain and simple. I'll have a bunch of him because there's enough value out there to be able to get to it. Uh, for Trevor Ariza, you know, I'm generally indifferent on him. Um, he'll be in some lineups, but he's not somebody I prioritize. Similar situation to P.J. Tucker. There's just there's very little upside in P.J. Tucker unless he gets a lot of steals. Joe Johnson should be in line for extra minutes, but I don't really think that gets us anywhere. Uh, the only other guy we should really be paying attention to is probably Capella. Um, Capella is 7,200 on FanDuel, 6,700 on DK. Hasn't had a monster game in a little bit. He went for 54 on March 15th. Um, I could see that being sort of a scenario for him. Uh, I have no problem uh, playing Capella tonight. Not exactly a huge priority. Like I'd much rather have Drummond, but um, I wouldn't shy away from Capella. And then for the Pels, Anthony Davis at 12-7, 11-5 on DK. These dudes are just playing so many games. Uh, they got a day's rest yesterday, but they had played five games in six nights. Um, so this will now be five games in seven nights. Coming off that back-to-back-to-back. -to -back -to -back, uh, but they're not in any position to slow down. And um, uh, I like AD a little bit more now that uh, Mba Mute is out. Might free up a little bit more time to get like Ryan Anderson on the floor, which will only help. So... Uh, no issues having AD. Again, I think there's enough value out there that getting to AD or um, or Harden will be pretty easy. Uh, for Drew Holiday, back down to 8,500, which is very appealing to me. Uh, I didn't like him up at that 9,000 price point. Um, 8,500 is still probably a little more than I would like to pay, but uh, that extra 500 bucks is, is something that I find very interesting. Um, my concern is that they're not going to get to the line enough, so what you're really worried about is just 
efficient scoring, which is kind of scary. Um, I definitely prefer the Houston guys to the Pelicans guys tonight. And then, uh, like, Eton Moore, Ian Clark, Rondo, Miritich, um, nobody really standing out as somebody I love. They would just be uh, flyers and GPP only, in my opinion. Uh, Rondo went for 47 in that third game of the back-to-back, but, you know, could be in line for a decent game with Chris Paul out. You just got to make sure that um, it's good Rondo and not bad Rondo. He could put up 16, he could put up 47, he could put up 55, he could put up 23. Uh, He's GPP only. I'll have some flyers on him, but uh, my expectations are pretty tempered for it. Now, the team that I hate talking about the most, the Memphis Grizzlies, hosting the LA Lakers. Uh, Five-point underdogs at home, seventh highest implied total. Um... I'm assuming Gasol plays. I've got Gasol and Evans in here. They've been flip-flopping these clowns in the last two. You got to keep an eye on the news, but really, you just don't want to have to rely on anything here. Um, If we start getting news that people are out, that might change things. But for now, um, I'll only want minimal amounts of anybody here. Uh, I don't really care for trying to figure this team out. There's just too many dudes that suck that are playing, and you, it's, it's only going to bring you strife. If these guys show up in lineups, fine. I'll try to make sure that they're not going to get scratched, but otherwise, um, I don't want to have one of those Tyreek Evans scratch two minutes after lock type deals, uh, especially when they're, they don't look to be in a good position anyway. Now, the Lakers... Love them, love them, love them. Uh, Memphis sucks. Lakers are playing hard, and they don't care um, because their pick is irrelevant for them. So KCP at 6,300 is somebody that I'll definitely have a little bit of. Uh, The price is a little bit too high for me, but it's a good matchup. Um, I'm going to be smashing Kuzma really hard. I'm going to be smashing Lonzo. I'm going to be smashing Julius Randle. I'm going to be smashing Brooke Lopez. I'll have a, a... a little bit smaller of an amount of Isaiah. Uh, hasn't been playing very well in his last couple. You know, Memphis might bring the best out of him, though. Uh, but much like two nights ago, I'm going to have an overwhelming amount of the Lakers, and I am more than okay with that. Uh, the prices are great. Um, Walton is playing these six dudes as many minutes as they can handle. They're obviously going to be very popular. I do worry about Memphis slowing the game down a little bit, but I think... Uh, the Lakers are going to get out and uh, put some points on the board, so I'm pretty excited to, to roster these guys. It's a great spot. Um, yeah, that you'll see how much they pop up on the optimizer. Love them all. Everybody except for Isaiah is like strong love. And finally, we've got the Mavs hosting the Hornets. Uh, Hornets are one and a half point favorites in Dallas. Dallas's implied total of 106.25 is eighth. Um, Dennis Smith expected to be back. Not somebody I'm terribly interested in on FanDuel, but at 5,900 on DK, I, I think that's something that would be interesting. Uh, Charlotte very good on defense, though, so I'm a little wary about having much of anything here. I'd be interested in a little bit of Harrison Barnes. And uh, maybe a little bit of Dennis Smith on FanDuel. Uh, But other than that, I'm not really fond of anything here. Between the matchup, I don't like it. And uh, just sort of the way that they're running rotations out. They're playing a lot of guys now. uh, Makes it really hard to be confident in anything. Uh, Not a lot of good cash looks outside of maybe Barnes here. And then finally, the Hornets. Uh... Hornets with the 107.75 implied total, which would be 6th. Kemba up to 9,100. Has gone over 50 in two of the three games without Batum. Uh, You know, I don't... I haven't loved him in these past couple games, and he's been playing really well. Obviously shot the lights out on the 22nd. Um, I won't have much of him here. I'm hoping that his ownership is relatively high. Uh... Also just chasing that 56-point game, so I will likely be underweight on Kemba. Um, As for Dwight, 
uh, coming off that 63 point game, you know, got an extra day's rest because of picking up the technical and being suspended. Uh, 8,400 on FanDuel, 8,000 on DK. Not the best matchup. You know, Nerlens is a, a pretty solid defensive center, but I'd be fine having some Dwight. Um, I'd still be fine having a little bit of Jeremy Lamb. Uh, not as much upside now that his price is up in the, the low sixes, but, you know, somebody that you can feel comfortable rostering. And then, uh, you know, if you need a flyer at power forward, Marvin Williams, I think, will be okay. Went for 31 in the last game, but, you know, so did Dwayne Bacon and Willie Hernan Gomez. Uh, with Howard back, um, you know, Hernan Gomez goes back to a relatively small amount of minutes, most likely. So, for me, um, Dwight and Lamb are probably the guys I'll have the most of, and I'm, I'm looking to be pretty underweight on Kemba. Uh, it's just not for me. So let us take a look at the optimizer. Uh, pasted that in the wrong cell, but I hope it don't matter. All right, games filtered. And let's go. Whoa, that's a lot of Mario Hazonia. Holy hell. Let's go ahead and uh, bring that down a little bit before I even actually run that. That is way too much Hazonia. Eh, maybe it's not. Maybe it's not. Maybe I'm wrong. I'll look into it. So lots of Harden, significantly less, uh, and by significantly less, I mean no AD, which I think is interesting. Uh, that won't be how I play it. I'll have a little bit of AD, but it is interesting to me that most of the value is at power forward, which sort of brings in Harden naturally there. Um, makes me curious to think about what the ownership will be of both. I'm thinking that AD will likely be over-owned compared to the, the optimal lineups that come out. So let's start with Harden. Um, I'm going to go with Marquise Chris and Kyle Kuzma, which will likely lead me to Hazonia. And I want to grab Drummond, so let's see those three. Augustine, Payne, Harden, Booker. Yep, I'm in here. This is a great lineup. Um, you know, you get two guys against Phoenix, which is perfect. I get Harden. I get Kuzma's value, Marquise Chris's value. I love this lineup. Um, hopefully Booker plays. <laughs> then we'll head to DK and do the same thing. This one should be pretty interesting given all of the, the price differences. Optimize to 10 and go. Yeah, overwhelming amount of Marquise Chris, but that's going to happen at 3,600. No issues with that. Way more AD on uh, on DK than on FanDuel, which is interesting to me. So I'm going to go that direction. I'm going to grab Chris first, and then I'm going to grab AD. Uh, I think Ish looked pretty good on DK. I'm going to go that direction, and then I'll grab Aaron Gordon. We'll see what we've got there. Yeah, I would be... I'd be a little dubious of Justin Holiday, but at 3,600 with the way that they have some injuries, I think that flyer would be fine. Um, I'd be I'd be okay here. Uh, Dennis Smith looked a little bit better on DK. I think that's a perfectly acceptable lineup. That's probably too much Suns. I would probably look to move off of Josh Jackson and go a different direction, but I like some of that. 
I feel like I'm a little trapped by this. Let's, let's walk Ish Smith back and see which direction we should really go. What do we got at the top of the DK board? Vooch, Gordon, Lopez, and Smith. Let's just grab Smith. Wait, that's Dennis Smith. Okay, we'll grab Dennis Smith. We'll grab Vooch. What do these Brook Lopez lineups look like? Okay, now that's one I can get behind. DSJ, Payne, Hazonia, Chris, Vooch, Booker, Randall, Lopez. That one looks pretty fun to me. Yeah, actually, I like the pricing so much more on FanDuel tonight. It, it really gives a lot of options. So that's where we're at now, guys. Quick video, I know, but only five games, and none of them are incredibly eventful. So that's it. Um, I will absolutely be around all day for any questions, whether it's comments on the video itself, Twitter, Reddit, wherever you want to find me, I will be around. Um, now that this is my uh, my real job, don't be afraid to hit me up. I got the time now. Um, best of luck to everybody. Um, I highly recommend uh, heading to awesomeo.com, create an account. You'll get um, his projections. Uh, you'll get projected ownership for the night. Um, this is all in the free period for the website, so I highly recommend you check it out. Um, you'll get his slam dunks, which is his uh, best looks. You'll get a, a breakdown article of the entire slate from Chris Bags. Highly, highly recommended it, guys. So please go check that stuff out. And that's where you're going to find me uh, in the near future. So that's all for me. Uh, best of luck tonight, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Have a good one.